Morning everyone, Ian from DIY Home Gardening. It's the 16th of August, so time for mid-monthly roundup. Um, rare day off, so come up to obviously start doing the video. So if I turn the camera around and we can have a look as to what's occurring. <laughs> You can see that the ground's been looking pretty dry. Although last night we did have rain and some high winds. So the fence is down. Um, admittedly, it was only held up by string in a couple of places. But that uh, does probably mean that the uh, pumpkin's going to start running wild if I don't do something about it. So. You can see on the sweet peas, they're now going into a lot of seed production. Uh, so I need to, well, probably uh, get some labels on those to remember which colours are which for saving. Jerusalem artichoke that was looking really good as a screening, looking a lot thinner at the base and that is because the sheep have been eating it and I caught them the other day. The pumpkin beds. So that is the giant pumpkins, hopefully. These are normal pumpkins. Uh, had one of these snap off, so that's a zombie pumpkin variety. Uh, might have to walk the other way actually. So it got pumpkins on the go and pumpkins forming through the bed there. And you can just make it out there, but that is one of the giants that is coming. So it'd be nice to get something of size from those. So um, beetroot. I think it's, I oh know there are some good sizes amongst there actually. Yeah, let me. So, some decent sizes amongst there. The celery, so on the face of it, looks, looks good. Although, I have got these two plants that are going to uh, flower production, and having messaged a couple of people about that is because they've dried out. Now, I think this is probably something specific or more specific to this variety because I've never had it happen before on Green Utah, but this is the golden self blanching. So whether this is a little bit more susceptible, I don't know. But um, essentially, these flowering ones are going to be no good for uh, showing and really I need to dig them out and turn them into soup or something before they uh, potentially change to become more bitter. Uh, grabbed out the radishes that were through the middle because you can see on the remnants on the, oh, I've missed one, remnants on this, all that, that's uh, from a thrip. So uh, decimated the leaves, there we are, you can see them, all those little black beetles, that's thrip. Uh, it literally decimates the the leaves, which in turn causes stunting. Let's chuck that in the compost bin. So uh, pulled all of those out. Uh, the leeks though, I'm really pleased with how they are. They're potentially the best sized leeks for this stage of the year that I've grown for a couple of years. So I'm really pleased with those. And this is the tomatillos. So, Plenty of husks on there, and down there there's a good sized fruit. Uh, there's a few fruits amongst them uh, that are sizable, but really most of them at that very small stage. Fennel, now again, this has gone into flowering or bolting stage. Uh, it is weather driven, but it's also what kind of what it does. It gets this time of year and it you just can't stop it. So on some of the bigger ones, they could be lifted and used. 
uh, the others there's not a lot of um, bulb to be honest to eat so uh, I'm just going to leave them for the insects to be honest uh, again here just not been successful the last couple of years with the turnips it is the flea beetle the last couple of years on this plot for whatever reason up here whether it's because it's more exposed whether it's because it's surrounded by the farmland um, but yeah I've just had really bad flea beetle the last couple of years and you know they're literally just sitting there munching um, totally decimated those uh, I've got some leeks planted out they are um, belgium not belgium bulgarian giant leeks see what they do spring onions putting on a bit of growth uh, i did some extra seed sowing in there just to infill the rows this is the bull's blood beetroot so it's not grown for the uh, rounded root element but more for the uh, leaf so that should be nice uh, actually it was so here we can get to these pumpkins hopefully so little selection there still can't really see the giant but i'm not going to try and get through there so dahlias uh, plenty of bud formation purposely uh, been taking off uh, little side buds or wing buds as they are which would give bigger central flowers try to work on the timings a little bit for a bit later on just in case i wanted to submit something to a show but possibly something ready um, who knows but they're just starting to come although that's gone over that's blight and softer gleam Mary's Jamanda, Scamsdale, just starting to pop. Now this, um, ignore that one, this is Sandia Gold. So the foliage actually is pretty poor, the plant itself, not the best, but you can see how much flower it puts on. It works really well as a cut flower. And to be honest, it'd work really well in the garden because it is such a compact plant. So, um, yeah, plant it somewhere where you won't see that foliage. Now, the mess that is all the sweet corn, started picking a few of those the other day. Sounds like the guys at the farm have started. So I really need to harvest these sweet corn before uh, insects get into them. Because there are so many and uh, yeah, let's show you. <clears throat> yeah, and they're all showing good colour and sizing. Now, this is what happens when you leave courgettes. They become monster beasties, which I've decided I'm just going to leave to see how big I can get them. Uh, can I get down this side? Yep probably. Trombocinos. Uh, Eucocuries. We'll try and get around the other side. So Trombocino started creeping over the top. I've got to admit they don't uh, self-climb like I thought they would do. So I'm having to tie them. That's decent size. Soleil courgette been absolutely amazing again this year. I um, think I'm going to drop one of the green varieties. No. So this is kale, red Russian. See all these little marks there? That is from Thrip. And then that there is the cabbage white caterpillar. So we'll just discard that into the field. I'll try and get round there to have a look. Loads of beans coming. Uh, they've been growing at a rate of knots faster than can eat them. But some big old sizing. So this is a Guinness record. 
butternut squash all come in now, which is good. Some nice sizing amongst those. Um, I can't think. Uh, Sugar Max, I think it is. Should remember, but because I've gone through a few different varieties the last couple of years, but I think it's Sugar Max or Super Max, something like that. But look at the size of those. And speaking of size, size of those tomatoes, absolutely massive. So comparison, and Vigus Trombocino, which is there. So all the way down, massive. And then got some decent sized Turks turban as well. Much uh, better sizing than last year. But look, the moles are everywhere. So this bed, uh, rhubarb starting to regrow again, which is looking good. Gooseberry uh, pruned back. The artichoke is now pretty much gone over. There's a couple of flowers left on the top. Um, I'm going to pull that out. I won't grow that artichoke again. So um, I think I'm just going to, yeah, grab it out end of season, put it in the compost bin. Might go to the other type of artichoke the the edible one see whether i can do that to be honest i didn't really know there was a difference between the two types um again that's i guess highlights doing your research a bit better i just assumed that because uh tailors were selling this under their edibles bit then this was the one i wanted for the heads but turns out that uh, this one is the one that you use for the leaves and the stems. Eat it a bit like celery. Well, I've got plenty of celery, so I don't need it. Uh, right, so down here, transplanted the leeks that were in the top bed. Obviously, it coincided with um, it becoming the hottest week of the year, so they've sort of struggled a bit, although they've grown, they've definitely grown in height, they have struggled with the heat, so we'll see how they do. Tomatoes are looking good. They've been amazing to taste. Yeah, nice salvia to look at. So this bed is now looking a little bit scrappy. Uh, we we'll start this in. So, um, oh bloody hell! I was going to pick all them. So that is the chickpeas. So the mice have had. All the chickpeas, bloody things. Um, so that was going to be my job today, was pulling them. I noticed the other day they were pretty much there. They obviously were there. Uh, so last of the mini pop corns to pull. Got uh, a few Hestii beans still to go. Tomatoes, carrots are, might do something by the end of the year, don't know. Um, parsnips were really struggling, so what I did, I actually started cutting off some of the uh, older foliage and they're regrowing from the base, so that's not so bad. Uh, beetroot, dahlias, oh, peas grown somehow. That's covers blown away. More caterpillars. So these are late late planted kohlrabi's. Uh, beetroot under there, which again, like they got some good old size into them. They're the first batching, to be honest, of the uh, um, bolt hardies, spinach. Uh, this bed is the elephant garlic that was in overplanted with different things needs a little weed the radishes have all been pulled now the beans i'm going to just pull them and so as and when i get some more manure i'll just 
blanket cover that and that'll be job done, ready for the winter. Um, forgot to show you that big old thing there, that's the sunflower. Rainbow chard, looking good. Had uh, plenty of pickings off that. So these purple plants, these are the auric or um, perpetual spinach and actually despite a few holes they look pretty clean so potentially that's something that thrip doesn't enjoy along with swiss chard so we should see uh, these are the uh, disco mix of beetroot so they're coming on quite nicely and you can now see so they're the egyptian walking onions as in they were the main bulbs and then the smaller bulb bills I planted to occupy this bit which is what these lots are so they're now coming through again just wants a little weed through that kale cavolo nero again all this yellow into the outer bit that's where the thrips been able to go across that netting and just take little mouthfuls we've had quite a lot of picking from that really another three or four weeks time then this cover will come off once the thrip and the white fly have gone and then these can just you know shoot upwards and again you can see the damage for the red russian but don't want to take this cover off because it'll just get decimated by those little buggers um in here again last block of uh, beetroot under there was where those uh, smaller red um, leeks were and then got the cabbages something's been through there something's definitely been through there i don't know what but anyway yeah something definitely has been through there because that's been eaten and squashed um yeah and that's a compost bin and we're back to the sheep again so yeah that's where we're at for uh, the mid-august update right so back at home thought i'd carry the video on show you i haven't shown this plant for quite a while um it's the dragon fruit so you can see it's got plenty of stems to it some more growth coming up there um going crazy i just to be honest just want it to produce some fruit that'd be nice but anyway excuse the mess i've been paddle boarding this morning so a bit of stuff so that's the grapevine get some decent sized fruits on that still need to thin out a few more you thin them out then you'll get bigger fruits to what's there so fig tree picked a couple of them that's the last one that remains but loads come in lemons So uh, that's the Slane quintoriensis or Naringilla. You can see four decent fruits to that. Just need them to ripen a bit more. Cucumbers full of powdery mildew now. Not looking the best. But still plenty of cucumbers coming. You can see the pick though. Need to back out there and got these ready for planting. So these are uh, potato charlotte. So it's an early variety, or what you class as an early variety if you're planting in spring, but this time of year, plant them ready for Christmas. Strawberries need a bit of TLC, but now we're in the back end of the season. We're getting still plenty of fruits, but just smaller sizing oh. right. so I've picked a load of tomatoes this week to do uh, tomato soups and some passata so what's left here kind of the remnants just waiting for them to 
ripen up a bit more. Can't wait for these. There's the San Mizano. And those Tigrellas are so good. And then amongst this lot, these are all the peppers. So we've got the sweet peppers on this side here. Had a couple off that already, which, oh, Beja, yep. Um, uh, those are the sweet peppers and then number Tom Montillo and this lot are all the chilli peppers so that's looking good I'll cut out the other two because they'd start to revert as in losing their uh, leaf coloration which is not a lot of use because um, it just shows that it's not a stable variety so by keeping this it means that it can then cross pollinate to ensure that the fruits that develop on this are going to be for this variety and that would mean that the seed that I save will also then be specific to that variety so you can see not all of these have got sizable fruits some are still little um, this is quite a nice one, new variety to me, it's called Tangerine, when ripens they go orange. But loads of fruit coming, some ripening, some not so, so they're looking good. Uh, Holy Peak, always an easy variety to get going. Um, and. As always, plenty on there, so that's mushroom red. Still hot when they're at green stage, though, but at red stage, you definitely know it. And this is jalapeno cross tiger. And you see it's getting some good fruits forming and hold them upright as opposed to a lot of them that hang downwards. Also got plenty coming on there. Um, what else we got? Let me show you. Kind of bypass these. These are cuttings from the allotment. That's the Taunton Dean Kale. And here, as it's been hot, plenty of moisture onto that. That's uh, the two troughs of ginger. And to make the soup, we've been using plenty of the basil as well. So there's the green basil there in flour that the bees are loving. And the purple variety too. Not a lot of, well there's not a lot to see really other than the apple down the bottom here. Yeah, some really good size in there. They're scrumptious. Loads. Um, and well, we've harvested absolutely loads of blackberries. This lot here, all fallen off in the high winds. Um, not a lot left now. It's a bit, but uh, yeah, not a lot worth having. Probably got one more good picking on those. And then that's them done. Only put this up, it stops the sun really scorching the fruits up. So in previous years I've used uh, fleecing, but that tends to rip quite quickly. But you can see that's that marking there, that's from scorch. It's not from insects or anything like that, so don't worry if you see that. It's perfectly fine to eat. It's just from being too hot. Just come and see what we're doing. Okay, so that's middle of August update done. Um, hope you like the video. If you've got any questions, then please send those questions to me. I'll do my very best to answer them for you. If you like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on future videos. And I always say it, it's so true. Just enjoy yourself, have fun, and make the most of time outside and the weather so till next time bye for now mm -hmm.